Hey everybody, David the AI Guide here. Welcome and thank you to new subscribers. Also, follow us on Facebook and Twitter and now Instagram. St uh, we'll keep you up to date because there is so much breaking stuff now. It's crazy. I literally, uh, this past week, could have generated eight videos. That's how much stuff is going on. But today I wanted to talk about a uh, teleconference that I participated in. It was a Zoom conference, really, on EVTOL, which I did a video on about a month ago. So EVTOL is Electric Vertical Takeoff and Landing. So the great thing about this particular Zoom meeting was it was with industry experts, people who work in and follow and analyze the air transport sector as a whole. So we're talking airplane manufacturers, uh, commercial airlines, military plane manufacturers, military uh, fleets, uh, they track all of it. They're in the middle of all of it. And uh, we all know that helicopters have been around for quite a while now, uh, invented by Igor Sikorsky, who lived in Connecticut, and Sikorsky Aircraft is still in Connecticut up near Bridgeport. Uh, so uh, helicopters have been around quite a while now, <laughs> but EVTOL is totally different. And that was the gist of what they talked about at this meeting. So first, uh, the EVTOL market, electric takeoff vertical and landing market, will not disrupt the existing helicopter market at all. Why? Because uh, EVTOLs for now and in their startup configuration are going to be short distance transportation. And your average helicopter can travel mid distances uh, much longer than these EVTOLs will be able to travel. And so they're really addressing different markets. And there's another name for EVTOL that's used at NASA and other places. Uh, along, uh, part of it is uh, Uber and Lyft, but uh, it's called Urban Air Mobility, and that's what this really is about. It's about moving people around urban areas, not on the surface. And so uh, this market will not affect the existing helicopter market, which is 50% oil and gas. What does that mean uh, for flying parts and crews to exploration oil wells that are well off the coast of the United States, miles and miles off the coast, or uh, miles from uh, settlements, uh, in a lot of cases, like out in Montana and Wyoming and places like that. Uh, but the EVTOL is a brand new market. And uh, one of the really interesting things that they talked about uh, with EVTOLs is that the controls are going to be completely different than a helicopter. So a helicopter requires a pilot to fly it. And this urban air mobility market will not develop in that configuration. They, they said that and they were clear about that. So what does that mean? Well, it means that they are all going to run on artificial intelligence, which is why we talk about it. And also, uh, AI is going to be so sophisticated in these vehicles that these industry experts predict that it will be similar to driving your car so that anyone can drive it, which means pilots are very expensive. They're highly experienced, highly trained, high cost assets. And this EVTOL market will not support that because the fare to go around 
different cities, Dallas, Fort Worth, or Houston, or New York, or Chicago, LA, San Francisco would be too high uh, to get to the kind of usage they're talking about. So this urban air mobility is needs to be thought of as an air taxi, and the costs are going to be sort of comparable, not quite to ground taxis, because air travel is inherently more expensive, but uh, it is going to be much, much cheaper than what it costs to uh, take an airplane somewhere. So uh, AI is going to be the enabling technology for urban air mobility slash EVTOL. And it was very interesting to hear these industry experts talk about this and what a critical enabling technology that AI is to make this happen. And uh, they also talked about how, uh, which I didn't know before I attended this conference, uh, that electric parts and maintenance is much, much cheaper than uh, gas powered, which is what all air transportation is now. Jet fuel is further refined gas. It's, it's ultra refined kerosene to be correct, but it's really expensive. And EVTOL is a breakthrough because electric is cheap and the maintenance of it is much cheaper because the engines have much fewer moving parts, much less maintenance, and that also helps drive down the cost that we will see when these things get going. So I've already told you that uh, NASA and the FAA have been working together for many years already to figure out how all these uh, urban air mobility vehicles are gonna fit into the airspace. And they had to do that work before they could allow these things to start flying. But that work is in its final stage. They're about to issue final regulations on this, which means that it will be permissible. At the same time, we've talked about how Uber, Lyft, and a bunch of other people are working on these vehicles already. They're already in prototype development, or some of these companies are actually in testing already with prototype vehicles, which is the final step before the production vehicles start rolling. And one of the videos, this is probably three or four months ago that I did, talked about a group down in Florida that's building uh, urban air mobility um, a vehicle to go between Orlando and Tampa St. Pete, which is a decent distance. That's probably going to be at the limits of the range of these electric vehicles, but very exciting stuff. And uh, there's many other players, both in the United States and Europe, already working on these. And if the US and Europe is working on them, you can take it to the bank that the Chinese are working on it also. So this is in the very near term. What do I mean by that? Well, uh, we can see, we will see prototypes flying as soon as this year, 2021, and we will see production vehicles start to fly as early as 2023, but probably more like 2024. That's only three years from now, and this is going to be real. So uh, this is part of what we've been talking about, about exponential technologies and how there's a lot of work done behind the scenes that's invisible, and suddenly all these new things burst into the public, and you're like, where the hell did that come from? Well, that's how exponential technologies work slow at first, and then very rapid adoption. And that's what we're going to see in urban air mobility and the EVTOLs. By 2030, these things are going to be all over the place. So hope uh, you like this update. We are going to continue to update critical areas and interesting areas like urban air mobility, EVTOL. And uh, please like, subscribe, share, 
And uh, also, uh, again, resources coming shortly. Uh, and for those of you uh, who are interested in potential careers that are AI safe, someone is going to have to maintain and manage all of these uh, urban air mobility vehicles. And so that means that there's going to be a big need for mechanics who will be very highly paid. There's going to need, be a need for an equivalent of fl flight controllers uh, to watch airspace. And there's going to be the whole corporate infrastructure behind these things with a bunch of companies uh, having whole corporate staffs. And one of the things they said uh, in this uh, Zoom meeting is that there's going to be a lot of these companies at first and then it's going to shake down to a few, which is what tends to happen in industries as they mature. So lots and lots of job opportunity that will be AI safe in this sector. Thanks. Take care. Talk to you next time.